Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Prince Alice Place. It is great to see you, as always. Our guest is an incredible writer, and you can't really get any place in this business without great writing. Her name is Sarah Hudson. We'll introduce you to her in a second. Coming up in May, a very cool conversation for the Latin Alternative Music Conference, hosted by our very own Dave Pensado, and his guests were Rafe Sardina, Josh Goodwin, and Dave Way, and they're talking about producing and mixing Grammy award-winning music. It comes from the Gibson Showroom over on Sunset, thanks to our friends at Gibson and KRK. Coming up in May, we'll let you know. Hit us on our socials, like and subscribe, click notify. You can see our socials right here. And without further ado, love this lady, love her attitude and posture toward music. Please enjoy our conversation with Sarah Hudson. Hi, Sarah. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, it, oh. it, it is a pleasure. Um, you know, was it was it the beginning of being born into the Hudson family, the free spirited nature of supporting creativity and allowing you to find your own way. Is that what started the path? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I kind of just came into this world, you know, into a musical house into, you know, um, creativity and, um, music constantly playing, singing, you know, putting on plays. I mean, it just was part of my life, part of my childhood. Mm -hmm. Um, And I kind of, I always kind of say, you know, I think if I went to my parents and I was like, I'm going to be a lawyer, they'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, it was just, it was just the nature of my childhood, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think for um, uh, like for me and for lots of others, it was church. Right. And, you know, you sang, you had to perform. If I stood up in front of another summer Bible school and sang some song and had to, but but those early implanting things, I think beyond you sort of figure out technically your path, I think it's a feeling that you get. Mm-hmm. And the feeling is what you protect and nurture and you know, like some of it is spiritual some of it's intellectual but without the spiritual part I am a very spiritual person I mean and uh you know I it's the podcast that I do is actually about can, how does spirituality and creativity work together yeah. um, because for me I mean I you know I'm not like trained as a musician I'm not I mean I you know, I'm trained as a singer, but I don't know, you know, harmony and theory and, you know, I'm just a channel. So Mm -hmm. I I really believe that spirituality is such a key player for me personally in music and creating, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, it's a feeling. It's true. It's like, oh, this feels right. And I think I always had that since I was little, like, this is where I feel the most whole, the most home when I'm singing, you know, dancing, uh, writing songs. It's just, it feels right. I'm all about the feeling, all, all about it. When I read, uh, when I read uh, about you, um, I, I had a situation with uh, Michael Jackson where he was wanting to get out real fast. I'm like, Mike, why are you trying to leave? And he's, he said, well, because there's a song out there and I want to beat Prince to it. And so when you said you're a vessel, wow. you really believe you're a vessel for things that are out there and that can come spiritually through you. Can you expand on that a little bit, particularly the mermaid part of the thing? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 really, um, I really believe that and I really relate to that because I feel like, you know, the ideas, I mean, you know, I believe in the universe, in God, in divine order, all of it. So I believe that these ideas and these messages are out there in the ether needing to be put into the world. I really believe that. And I, and I think in Michael Jackson saying that is so cool because I think sometimes when you're, you know, you hear another person's creation, you're like, Oh my God, I just had that idea. Or I just thought of that. I think we're all in this like collective consciousness It's just about being open to channel it, you know? So I don't know. I I really relate to that. I get that. 
How does it influence your, your work? Um, you know, I'm like, I'm all about energy, especially in a writing session. To me, creating the energy is my, creating the vibe is my first goal. Just walking into the room, even aesthetically, I like to do, make sure I like the lights, make sure I'm like comfortable. Like, you know, I'm just, I like to create my environment and then really connect with who I'm working with. And, you know, who are you? Where do you come from? What's, what are you feeling? Just sort of creating this open, safe space, you know, to be vulnerable. And, and I think once you're like on a collective frequency of that, I feel like you just tap in, you know, and it, and it comes out. I just believe that to be true. It doesn't happen every time. No, but that's the ultimate, you know, writing experience for me. You know, it's, it's interesting in Dave bringing up Michael Jackson and, and Sarah, what you're talking about. I'll lend two quick ones. Um, I had the extraordinary pleasure of being Maurice White's partner for about six years. Wow, cool. I remember him sitting in my office once and saying, hey, man, you got to open up your hand, let the universe in. Right. The clothes. He said, you know, guys, like, and and I would ordinarily in my smart ass know it all way go, yeah, yeah, that's really cool creative shit. But I was looking at Maurice White going, yeah, maybe I should listen. And I will tell you that it shifted the way I approach things and the way, because he said, you you have stuff coming in all the time. And if you just, that was one. And then recently, uh, just somebody who I think is a seminal talent, Dave Cobb out of Nashville, who does Chris Stapleton, a whole bunch of others. Um, we shot at his studio and he sets up almost an intimate conversation He's, he's recording his guitar across from you. He he never pretends to know it all. He, he And he was on our show saying how much he doesn't know. He just focuses right. on as much as you. And he comes from a Pentecostal background. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so the, the point to our audience is that these things really work for your creativity. They work for unleashing who you may have in you from a potential standpoint and if you don't explore that, you don't know what you're potentially missing. Uh, so it, it is it is fascinating to not only see it work, but to watch masters who understand it. Um, I remember, and I've told the story a number of times, uh, when I was back in my management days, um, I had a client that was published by Quincy Jones, and he would never put a studio in his home. That was way back in the day. And he said, because the studio's like church, and you got to let God enter. So you got to go to church and keep it reverential and keep it special. And then I let love that. that. I love yeah, that. I, was, I almost want to put it up on my wall. I'm like, it's so... Um, so so here's what's fascinating when you when you bring it forward um, as a sought after person to top line and do things are do you do you challenge are you excited about challenges that take you out of what people may know you for and and try other genres is that an interest to yours you'd like to go down the barrel yeah I mean I I'm really open to anything you know I just I just recently worked with this artist. His name's Youngblood. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's, you know, kind of punky and, and rock and uh, off the beaten path. And, you know, that was one of my favorite experiences I've had as a writer, just because of his passion and his energy. And I, I feel I'm able to tap into any kind of genre Mm -hmm. as long as like I'm as long as I am in the moment and inspired by who I'm working with really you know like I'm there to sort of assist the artist in their vision and 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 I'm just I'm down for whatever I mean I'm I'm really open to it all um it is challenging sometimes when you know when it, when people are in their head and there is ego in the room and, and it's not a full high vibrational connection, you know, which, which does happen and everybody has their own process and it can't all be what I want it to be. So I, I just, 
I try to just get there myself and, yeah. and make sure I'm there and make sure I'm leaving my ego at the door. That's so major for me because that ruins a, a writing session for me. It's like, I'm, I just feel I, I'm not really precious anymore about, mm-hmm. about anything. I'm kind of like, cool. Like, let's like, change it then. If, if nothing happens with it. Okay, cool. I've learned to sort of let it all go and let it fall away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. After the experience is over. And I, it's been one of the greatest things for my personal, like, happiness, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but, yeah, I'm pretty much up for anything. I mean, if it's, if someone is, if someone is in the room and an artist is in the room and they're passionate about, and they're a visionary and they have a goal, I just thrive off of that. I, it inspires me so much, no matter if it's a country artist, a hip hop artist, whatever, you know, I'll fit into your world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Do you um, do you do do you catalog concepts and then and then you said you said you said like you work with concepts, melodies, and um, um, lyrics. And yeah. um, so so do you, you do you get the concept first, then the melody, and then the lyrics, like the average writer, where you've got like 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 massive mountains of uh, ideas on napkins and, and, and stuff right. like that and scrap pieces of paper. You know, I do, I have that always constantly going. Like, you know, if I hear something when I'm out or something in a movie or whatever it is, I am constantly sort of writing those things down. Um, but I also just really thrive when it's in the moment and when it's like, you know, come coming from a conversation. So if I'm in the room with someone and we're talking about what are you going through? What are you feeling? I'm like, oh, let's write about that. Let's write about that. You know, and I know I have I have my concepts and, and phrases to to um, lean back on. But I prefer in the moment of just like, what do we want to say right now? You know? Um, and, and as far as how it goes in a session, I mean, it's different all the time. Just, it could start with a melody and then we get a concept. It could start with a concept. Like it's just, for me, it's different every time. How do you know, do you have someone in your team that polices the, the melody? How do you know that you've written a unique melody? I've always, with songwriters, I've always wondered, cause you run the risk of, you know, I mean, you, you, know, you remember uh, George Harrison, you know, he didn't do it intentionally, but still got right. You, know, you have a team that does that. I mean, it's kind of, it kind of goes back to what we were saying in the beginning. It's just feeling for me. It's just like, Oh, I feel this. Feel, I, this makes me feel a certain way. This feels so good. I, and to me, it's like, Oh, that feels right. And when I work with collaborators that I, I work well with, we all have that same feeling. We just know when it's right, you know? And as far as like original melodies, I mean, yeah, I think that's always sort of in the back of everyone's head. Like, wait, have we heard this before? And, you know, I don't, it's such a, it's such a tricky line because who knows what we've who knows what is in our subconscious or, or what this person heard. And I heard, or it's just such a tricky line, but you know, I try to stay very cautious of that. Um, I think think there is a balance. Like I've, I've been sort of monitoring this uh, initiative that songwriters are joining so that folks Mm -hmm. who are artists and you're putting a song on their record or claiming pieces of publishing right. to have the right to do it. And, and what I always concern myself about and have my own monitoring version inside our forum is when you have to be too aware of crossing a line, too aware of legislation, too aware, it, it takes away from that aha moment. Like yes. you got to at least get to the yes. moment and then yeah. see if it, right. You, you can't get, you can't get unliberated from the yeah. thing that liberates you. Correct. That's exactly right. And I, I'm such a, um, I'm such a believer in that. And I'm kind of also just like, let's get it out. Even if the lyric isn't right, even if the melody isn't right, let's just get it out. And then we can go back later and fine tune it and change some notes or change some words, whatever. But 
I think in the process, by constantly being like monitoring, you're stopping the connection, you know, and you're stopping the flow. You know, it was because I was involved in, you know, Dark Horse, a song I wrote has a lot, had a lawsuit and it was traumatizing. I mean, I was for sessions for a lot of sessions after that, I was like, Oh my God, does this sound like something? Does this sound? Cause I'm just like, it it really traumatized me. And I I think there's something that has to be put in place. I don't know how, I don't know who, but you know, I think it's, it's gonna, it's gonna scare creators from creating, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I agree, Sarah. I think that, um, one of the challenges about something that is technologically advantageous is that abuses then can happen from the technology. Yes. And when you can find every node and trace it back to its origins back before the Bible and, and yes. realize that there was a song when Moses split the babies in the bull. Right. Like, <laughs> who was the poop pen? I, <laughs> I actually think Dave mixed that bull rush right <laughs> <laughs> are, are you musical in that you pick out melodies or is it just top lining stuff? Because you um, and you've been an artist. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I hear, I mean, I play very little piano, like barely, you know, I can mm-hmm. get by. Um, but I, I'm not trained in like harmony and theory, anything like that. And I, but I am very musical. I mean, it's all in my head, really. I can hear things um, and I express things by singing them, whether it's chords or notes or, you know, um, yeah, I mean, melody and, and lyrics and concepts are, you know, really my, my main thing, but I mean, I'm very vocal with the producers too about just how I hear things or, you know, I'm obsessed with, with the BPM, like let's just scoot it up a little or scoot it back. And it makes such a difference to me because back to what we began with the feeling, I feel it, you know, I just feel it. So what does it feel like that moment when, when you, when you, the song comes back out of the speakers and, and it's done and you did it. And what is that feeling like? I, I'll never know because I try to be a songwriter, and even my mother told me I suck. So, uh, oh, no. <laughs> so uh, I, I have a uh, you know uh, 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 Ross and the guys do such a great job. I mean, everybody. I I, I love songwriters because yeah. I can't do it. I can't. I just can't do it. Right. I mean, when when you mean after you write a song, like when you hear it, when it's done, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it's like something, if it's something you love, it's just like nothing else. I mean, I, I want to hear it over and over and over and over again. And it's, it's so crazy to me every single time that we started out in this room with absolutely nothing, like nothing tangible, nothing. And this song is here now. Like we created this, like it, I, it sounds so simple, but every time I'm always blown away, like how cool is that? You know, just from our conversation and our connection and our ideas, like we made this, I mean, it's unbelievable when you hear it and you love it, you know? What do you get from collaboration? And does it, I know, I know on one level, it gives you someone to bounce ideas off of, on another level, it's another ego in the room. It's another this. So how do you, how do you handle your collaborations? I think you've kind of touched on it earlier, but. Yeah. I mean, to me, um, you know, I'm a collaborator. I love collaborating. Like I can, sure. Can I write a song on my own? Sure. But I think there's an art to collaborating. And I think that, you know, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do because it's just when you're in that moment with someone you know, spitting back and forth and playing this sort of volleyball, like back and forth. And then, and you create something together. It's so special to me. Um, so, you know, and yeah, you can get caught up with people with, you know, that you don't gel with or that there's egos in the room and those, uh, you just have to learn how to navigate those kind of situations throughout time, you know, over time. But I think for me right now, where I'm at right now, I know 
I know the people that I work so well with and I trust them if they recommend someone to work with or, you know, I have, I'm in a good place now where I just know the people that I vibe really well with. And, Mm -hmm. and I love collaborating. I mean, it's my favorite, it's my favorite thing more than, more than some writers are like, sit down, write a song on your own and that they love it. It's -hmm. just not my preference. So, um, Please do me a favor because um, I really want to know. I really want to know in detail. So uh, I'll start off by just saying donuts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you know where I'm getting to, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so when Dua goes out and gets the donuts, and you guys are dancing and going crazy with a sh- with your sugar high. Yeah. And, and, but yet you came out with uh, levitating. Would you say that if I want to try and be a better songwriter, I should eat more donuts? Is that what the story of this story is here? I mean, I you know, you could give it a try. My trainer wouldn't like that that was the case. but, but that was just the case. Describe what happened, because I, I found that fascinating. I know. So we were we were in London, me, Dua, our co-writer, Coffee, and a producer named Cause. And we were we were, you know, trying things and not really loving it and just taking different, you know, doing different ideas. And I mean, it must've been like halfway through the day and Dua was like, I'm going to order us donuts, like this specialty donut place or whatever, you know? So they, the donuts get there and we're just eating them like crazy. And, you know, cause the producer starts playing this like fun, like beat and we're we're starting to get a little like sugary and <laughs> literally levitating i mean we're dancing <laughs> off the walls we're just like in the, in the galaxy and it just came out we were just we have such a good bond before uh-huh. us anyway so we're so comfortable and then we got this kind of sugar rush and then you know there's a line in the song my sugar boo Kind mm-hmm. of inspired from you know the donut, <laughs> and, and I I think you know that is what inspires songs to me is like living life. I mean that's you know eating donuts is cool. I'm happy that inspired a song, but it's like having fun, going outside, petting your dogs, reading a book, going to a museum. Like we need to live our lives in order to be inspired. For me, and and let's not miss the fact that those donuts and that experience resulted in hardware, Grammy. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like yes. This, is, this is good point. Good point. Experience. So you know, I mean, if no. you make it, you make it a one to one thing, guys. Everybody out there, diabetes or not, pound donuts, <laughs> pound donuts and donuts, get a oh Grammy. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so true. But, you know, one of the things that is certainly evident in your work, uh, particularly around the, the Future Nostalgia album and the, uh, the kinds of songs that are on there and the collaborations and so on and so forth, is that when you do magically connect with the right folks, uh, magic happens. It's so true. It's so true. And, and that that those songs on that album is a testament to that because levitating and physical the the people that i did those songs with i are my dear friends i love them as human beings we have the best time together and such a great connection and you could feel it in the songs you know and it's true it's like when you have that magical connection magic happens it just is true one of the things we also try to share with our audience is that in the creative process, it, you know, we like to sometimes talk about the technical and then we think that it's way more than that, that it's about your gut and creativity and accessing like we've been talking about. We also think that there's an element of, you know, you dream for success, you wait for it. And then when it hits you, it's much different than what you think it is when it hits yeah, you. It and really you is. Now maintain the purity of your creativity with the pressures and stress of 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 success yeah how how have you navigated it I think you know it's kind of like something I said earlier a little bit about living your life you know I realized that uh you know as creators we and in this industry it's like we're 
emotional beings and we're, our work is 24 seven. We're constantly thinking of ideas. We're constantly, you know, writing and creating and, you know, working hard. And I think it's not like we have a nine to five where it's like at the end of the day, we go home and we leave it. It stays with us. So, so for me, I think learning to have, to find joy outside of my career has been huge for me, Mm. whether it's in, like I was saying, going to a museum, hanging with my friends, reading a book, uh, playing with my dogs, like whatever it is Mm -hmm. that bring, I need, I needed to realize like I can find joy outside of my career. That was so huge for me. And also, also um, meditating is so massive for me. I just, it grounds me. It It reminds me like, you know, to connect to, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. And yoga, like working out every, something where I can get my energy out other mm-hmm. than in my career in music, you know, did, did it help you get through the pandemic stuff? Cause Oh, majorly saw, saw two things happened during the pandemic. This huge growth in the recording business side, particularly for home home recording and other kinds of stuff, which is amazing on one side. And then people finally acknowledging I'm dealing with, you know, mental health challenges and I'm isolated and so on and so forth. But because we have tools to collaborate, we don't necessarily have to be in the same place. You could keep working, but you had to find a healthy place to keep working. Did all that come into play for you as as a songwriter? Definitely. I mean, you know, I had to really... I'm, I'm a very extroverted person and I love being out. I love going out. I love being around people. Um, and I really get my inspiration from that, you know? So it was really hard for me at first to sort of be like, okay, I'm, I have to be with myself now and figure out a new way. And, you know, I don't particularly love doing sessions on zoom. I, I just, I'm an in the person I'm, I'm an in-person energy connection type of person. So that really was a lot for me to adjust to as well. And I think, you know, yeah, having those practices of like, okay, I don't have to work every day and I can still like, you know, be happy (laughs) and find joy and, you know, meditating and all of that. My spiritual practices were, I mean, they got me through last last year, you know? So for that, I'm very grateful. Very grateful. Speaking of getting through, you don't take clients, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I lost it. During, I lost it during the quarantine. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Right, meaning like you just you were just like mentally. Exhausted. I did everything wrong. I I, I went alone. I um, I kind of I really quarantined, you know. And I'm right. thinking to myself. Oh, it's going to be like work because I just, you know, for a living, I go into a dark studio and just work alone. Is what's the sure. difference? Yeah, but yeah. It got to me a little bit, but uh, yeah, you know I mean, let me, it, let me run this. Let me run this by you. Uh, I don't mean to interrupt, but I want your opinion because I, yeah. I, I value your opinion. Going back a couple of paragraphs, uh, when you mentioned the word museum, um, a lot of times I'll, uh, I'll 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 ask my my, my assistants and stuff to go look at some artwork, maybe in a book or a museum or, or go see a symphony. And, and I, I believe there's only one kind of creativity in the world and creativity is creativity, but the, 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 the media differs. So if you want to be a better songwriter, just go to the Getty and, and, and just and get that creativity. And, and you can't, I believe you can't own creativity, but you can borrow it. If you stand in front of greatness uh, and you can borrow some greatness. And, yes. and um, do you feel that, that I, I made all that up, but I think it's right. I 1000% feel that. I mean, going museums for me are huge and artists yeah. art is huge for me. I mean, I'm yeah. so inspired by yeah. art and, yeah. you know, even going to <laughs> standing in front of, you know, whatever an Andy Warhol or Picasso yeah. or whatever it is. I mean, yeah it makes you feel so many things and it's so inspiring to me. Yeah. But yeah. And, and surrounding yourself with greatness, you know, I think that's huge surrounding yourself with people that are better than you or or do different things than you. Like I, 
you know, I wouldn't say I'm great at playing an instrument. So if I'm working with someone who's incredible at it, wow, how, how amazing we can, you know, build each other up in different ways. Um, That's exactly why I keep these Chagall's. (laughs) Here. <laughs> Beautiful. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, Dave, let's see up batter's box. All right. Um, Sarah, the whole point of this is to just have a have fun. We okay. are lovers. Um, and I can just say anything that comes to my mind, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. I'm ready. It, it, you're, you're, you're the star here. So, whatever you want to do. Let's go. Okay, um, harmonies. Melody. Nice. Ad libs. Essential. Poetry. <laughs> Songwriting. Favorite microphone to sing into. Ooh. I have, I have a lot, but honestly, it's a little 57. It's the okay. little. You know, sometimes it just gives me like that raw feeling. Sorry, I'm talking too much. Uh, a lot of big records were done with that. Uh, you know? favorite, key, favorite key. Ooh. I don't have one. I love them okay. all. Okay, so, so I want you to tell me one. I want you to choose one. Jim Morrison or Madonna? Oh my God, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> oh my God. I got you. I I'm got looking you. at Jim right now. And I, you know, I guess since she's here, let's, I'll just say Madonna. Here we go. Okay. Major or minor key? Ooh. Ugh, both, but I'm a sucker for pop, so major. The Saurus. Ooh. Very essential for me. That's cool. Uh, BPM, we talked about that earlier. Beats per minute. Obsessed. I'm obsessed with BPM. If anyone knows me, they know that. And and as many words as you want on this one, Melody. Uh, it's everything. It's everything. And I and I just I'm feeling like it's it's like a, a language of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Those Here. twelve notes. Those twelve notes have a lot of power. <laughs> so much power. Yeah. Well, that, that was fun. Thank you for playing along. I love that. I could play that all day. Oh uh, no! And, and see, this is the first one. This had a couple of firsts in it. One, I think, for noticeable ink. This is probably our best batter's box for note. Now we there may be some others who are ink, but between oh. the and stuff, oh. smoking, yeah. smoking, absolutely. I got it everywhere. We I don't know that we've had a batter's box with the combination of cool glasses and hair twisting. Wow, <laughs> that's me in a in a nutshell right there. Ink, glasses, and hair twisting. Oh no, it's it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> I uh, love that. Every week we are uh, we have been blessed for 503 weeks of meeting the best and the brightest and uh, folks who want to come on the show and feel like it's an honor to come on the show and we try to do and this this is exact you're exactly what fulfills oh thank all you father's place um, I love now that you're welcome back on the platform anytime feel free to use it um, there are a lot of folks who'd like to hear from you we have. Lots of webinars and things where people want to. So, cool. so if you ever want to do some of that stuff, we'll we'll get in touch with Jessica. And always, always. I love just talking about creating and, you know. I think it's our obligation to try to give folks the information we have so that we continue to innovate and pay stuff forward and, yes, and all yes. that stuff. In wrapping up, what would give you, what would give Give our audience one Sarah Hudson piece of advice that you think is worthy for them. Um, I mean, you know, something we kind of already touched on, which is just find joy outside of the outside of your job. Yeah. Um, and in your job, both, you know, yeah. um, it's all about balance. And I think, I don't know, for songwriters, I 
I kind of always like to just say, you know, to not be afraid to suck and not be afraid to take a chance and, you know, going into that room and just being vulnerable and laying out any idea that comes to your head. When you hold things back, you're cutting off the connection, in my opinion. So it's like, just go in bold, you know, and um, find out what makes you special, what you can bring to the table and, and really hone in on that, you know? Um, That is great advice. Dave, take us home. One of the things that caught my ear was collaboration. Um, um, I think as, as animals, if we, if we could consider ourselves that for a moment, we're social animals and, 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 and we, we don't do well when we're by ourselves. In fact, we kind of worry about people that, that, that are introverted. Yeah. But uh, collaboration is, is the key to so many creative uh, media. And uh, mm-hmm. in my world, I, I look at my assistants and I go, is this good or is this good or not? You know, right. and so collaborating is something I think that uh, you, you gave us some really good insights into today. And I appreciate that. So you guys at home, don't be too proud to collaborate. It's going to really help you. It's going to really help you.